before we start, um, I'm here for Monique today. Uh, Monique is uh, ill and at home, and we all have to send best wishes to Monique uh, to Germany that next year she could come to Fostem and uh, hopefully present uh, this talk by herself. But I think I could give you the same input today and uh, we merged a little bit our presentation to, to have the same content and um, I think I could uh, present and uh, ins inspire you by the idea of the talk and the topic access as a human right. So and in your, your name is not Monique. No. <laughs> so my name is Philip, but uh, it will be the first slide, and then I will give you a short overview about me. So when the door is closed, I think we no, no, that's could. Thirty more seconds. Ah. Oh. Yeah, wait, oh. Strict, strict time plan here. Yeah, we're we're a bit German. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean that in a good way, of course. Yeah, <laughs> but yes, uh, yesterday and uh, Friday we we joined the um, the bar in the city there, and I see that uh, the beer is um, quite quite more um, heavy than uh, Germans' <laughs> beer, <laughs> and uh, that was my first lecture to be first time here in in Belgium. It's. Uh, Right, you can start now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome, everybody. Thanks uh, for coming. The room is quite full. Um, a few words about me. I'm a member of the board about uh, Freifunk Rheinland. Uh, we are based in Germany. Um, we um, are one of the um, organizations uh, uh, support people building free wireless networks, especially in the Freifen community. Um, I am uh, based in Essen. It's nearby Düsseldorf, to about 20 kilometers. Run my, company, run my company with uh, software and data center stuff, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, so on. A few sentences about the Five on Rheinland. We uh, do some, some research uh, with the community, empower people to build free and open infrastructure. That is the main goal of Freifunk. Um, we have some regional uh, meetings, conferences at the Chaos Communication Congress. We have meetings here at the Fostem. A lot of Freifunk guys uh, are here. And um, especially we as Freifunk Rheinland providing our own autonomous system um, as in a backbone network mm -hmm. and we get some um, IP transit to other Freifunk communities in Germany um, to connect their routers, uh, their wireless routers to the internet. Um, and there is some, some special thing about um, the last two years, it becomes more and more an and big, and big thing in the community to give some access in, to the internet to, to socially disadvantaged people, especially the refugee situ, uh, situation in Germany and then I think the other communities. I see some here from from Spain, Italy, and from from Greek, they have the uh, same situation and providing some internet access to socially disadvantaged people and especially the refugees that are coming from different nations to us. And then it is as essential to have internet connectivity when you will be in a, in a other country. Yeah. The topic of the talk is um, access is a human right, and we stand for this. We are in uh, many situations. We see that it is not, um, it's not true. It is not the situation we have, but we fight for this, and we hope to get much more support. 
And the interesting point is that we have some different views on this situation. We have the view from the European side, we have the um, in Germany, we have the view from the national rights, and there are some, some conflicts, and I will give you a short overview. The, the council says that uh, with, without internet access, the people can take part on the space of possibilities, and um, I'm, I'm with this, I think it is true. And um, there was a second uh, decision from, from the Parliamentary assemble, Assembly and um, it's, it's near the same that uh, the Convention of, of Human Rights says that it is essential to have access to the Internet to participate. So then we have uh, the German uh, constitutional rights and there it is, um, there we have some, some a better some other points. It is the um, freedom of information is, is very important and um, then we have um, the, the general right of personality. There are some other point. It is not direct in connection with the access but um, it is when you participate on the internet then uh, you have the general right of personality and um, it might be it might be um, different from the European thing. Um, there is some some very interesting point. Um, the fundamental right on social integration, and um, when you take a look of how the thing changed, you get in social with other people, it has moved, we can say today, totally to the internet. No, no more uh, postcards, uh, I think in, in post boxes is, uh, it, it is uh, not, not, not more today. Um, yeah, then we have um, a decision from the Bundesgerichtshof in Germany, it is a legal, legal court and they said that um, it is the the huge the huge um, the huge all the people are using the internet for the daily for, for daily and so when the internet connection or they have no access it has a an, an very big impact for for them because you have it you have it all all days, and you couldn't couldn't um, use couldn't uh, live without this. So that is that is the end in, in topic. Yeah, there will be a human right in, in education to participate, to get information, to be to do research, and uh, to the to do other things that are connected with with education. And um, we think that uh, this is, uh, for, for personally for me, it is an important point. When you, when you do some, some education, um, it, is, it is necessary to have um, access and to have um, a connection to, to the internet. And there we have the, the convention of the rights, um, what, uh, yeah, with, with in, in special with the status of refugees. Um, and the the problem when when there is no access and no connection for them, yeah. At uh, at the end, the uh, United Nations report said the same and said that disconnecting people from the internet is a human rights violation and against international law. So, but um, when I go to the to the next sep um, chapter of the talk, uh, first. A short introduction. What is Freifunk? But I think the most people know this project, and I, I, I told you before that we are providing some some free uh, internet access for for people and connect them. And um, then uh, when we when we go to the next slide, ah, we have here some some uh, information what we what we mean with with free. 
free uh, for us is it's not only that it, that they have no costs the user so it um, um, is is much more important that you have no restrictions on on the network and on the ex um, no censorship and no other no other unfree things but it uh, it is not only to to doesn't pay for for the access um, there is no business model we we are sure that uh, nobody um, pays uh, pay in in the masses for for um, internet uh, access at free Wi-Fi. So um, that's the uh, situation in, in Germany. Um, we have a lot of communities uh, in the whole country and there are a lot of access uh, nodes, 40,000 uh, today approximately. Um, we have there some statistics um, on, on the maps from the from the community where where the uh, nodes are in place you could you could um, provide gps coordinates and then you could watch on, on the maps um yeah and um, the second uh, thing um is uh, that we think at, at freifunk community and we make some political de decisions uh, discussions uh, that um, yeah it is a uh, uh, a governance task to connect the people and uh, when you when you remember the slides before that um, the European Union uh, say it very clear that it's a human right to to give access the people and um, yeah but uh, it is different from the situation that we have or I, I can only see the situation in, in Germany but I hear the same from other countries yeah um, yeah, uh, there are a few points to, to can communicate, to can access to education and inf information in a foreign country when you will be there. And um, it is better, better to use money for food and family and not to pre, uh, pay for prepaid internet. Uh, so we see this in a lot of refugee camps in Germany that there are um, a lot of internet um, prepaid uh, dialers and uh, the people gave gave more of the money they had for uh, to to get internet access as to as to buy um, um, food and, and the other stuff yeah yeah the problem is that there is no DSL or fiber or anything else in a ref refugee camp it is very hard to build internet in the wild and uh, there's no business model, uh, model I, I told you before. Um, so we, we, did, um, we need donations. And there is a huge uh, challenge to bring volunteers, um, as in these conference and in other projects, together with pro professionals that are providing or organization, uh, make organization of the refugee uh, camp there we had. There are a lot of technical challenges uh, with mesh networks for the mass and, and so with, with Wi-Fi for the mass. Um, I'm very proud of, of all the people in the Freifunk community there and, and the other wireless communities they say we are accepting the challenge and we are we are we have to provide some internet for these uh, people came to us and then uh, the result is that we have uh, most than 400 refugee and social projects connected over the se um, two or three um, years. But we, we do this as Freifunk community already before, but I think the last two years was an, uh, had a big, big impact. So yeah, and then uh, at the end we have uh, built internet and access for many thousands of, of people. So um, I have here a few pictures of uh, how we connect uh, these uh, locations from, from high positions. We install some um, radio equipment and, um, or, and then in the refugee case uh, by us in Germany it was so in, in North Rhine Westphalia that we had of, um, a lot of uh, sports parks that are not more in use and then they built some some tents on it. Um, yeah, that's me on the on the um, lightning on the lightning equipment there. 
um, up and we install there some some radio, some radio equipment to get some uplink and these are the tents where the people live and you could imagine that it is not so easy to bring there some infrastructure. Uh, power is a big problem. Um, you um, have your smartphone and uh, the battery is uh, I think the the most <laughs> the most uh, problem to to keep it full and um, yeah this, you see these these uh, electronic um, uh, power stations to to charge your phone and uh, it's not so easy when you uh, would like to to connect a wireless router on this and uh, you have a cable plugged in so this is the reason why this uh, one is, is, is plugged out and um, uh, one day later they came with the family and uh, put the um, put the smartphone in it, uh, plug out the wireless router and the, the internet uplink is, is down and there's a lot of trouble then in the in the camp. At the end I would uh, um, invite you to join the community, go to our internet site, there are much more contact details and um, there are a lot of uh, information about the local community. I think summary in the end is that the European Union said very clear it is a um, human right to connect the people to the internet but the situation in the country especially in Germany is not the same and it is not the reality we have. We as community could do a lot of a lot of good stuff but it is not the we couldn't not solve the whole problem and um, connect all these people. We could do only a little, little steps and with the power you have as in, in a community project, it is limited, the resources limited, but I think we could do um, our best and, and help people to connect to the internet. There were some special project that I would spend some words um, together with the Förderverein Freie Netzwerke in Berlin and Refugees Emancipation, they are built some internet uplinks and some internet cafes together with refugees and I think it is the best project we have in the Freifunk community to, to engage the people and to empower the people that came to us to build same uh, by, by self this infrastructure. We, we are not a uh, service provider for all the, the uh, people because it doesn't scale to do this as a community project. Um, so we have to empower the people to build by themselves the infrastructure they need and to build some wireless equipment uh, or mesh networks to connect the refugee camps or the other, the other locations they have such as internet cafes. So far, thanks for listening and when you have questions, I think we have some time. <laughs> thanks. We have eight minutes. For oh, we have eight, eight minutes for question. Oh, yeah. Here are some, yeah, there are some questions. Uh, we have some... Uh, <laughs> what about Freifunk in other countries? We have some uh, projects as um, GoofyNet, as Ninox, as um, WLAN Slovenia and, and uh, in, in, in different uh, countries we have same projects to, with idea to build mesh networks, connect people. It is not called Freifunk and I think um, it is important to know that Freifunk is much more than to build infrastructure, it is to transfer know-how, to build these, to, build, uh, to have these meetings, to connect the people, um, to, sp to spend um, some know-how and, and to transfer the know-how to, to the um, people they are interested. But um, in a lot of countries we have um, the same idea and the same spirit to build such free Wi-Fi networks, yeah. And we are in contact with them, have meetings and um, met them at Chaos Communication Congress or here, uh, some other talks are here from, from other uh, Wi-Fi, uh, free Wi-Fi projects, yeah.
and it's good to have them, yeah. Um, how we deal with uh, loss for the uplink in the in the sites? Yeah, yeah. we the coast. Ah, the coasts for the uplink. Ah, okay, uh, um, the coasts. Yeah, um, in many um, in many uh, situations we have some um, some private uh, organizations or some some family or some house or some uh, company nearby a refugee camp and they're spent the uplink so there we have no nothing to pay uh, for the uplink and for us it is important to have people that support this project not only with money so we spend some bandwidth from their fiber or DSL connection and in other situations we have uh, quite good cooperations with uh, local cities and the infrastructure providers from the cities and they spend us some fiber or DSL or but it's it's uh, much uh, different because the uh, country is very big and you have some different uh, organizations in the city uh, you have corporations or you have no cooperation and it's it's different but um, in the most cases we didn't pay for this some other questions yeah, yeah. how do you deal with the government law uh, for responsibility for the connection you share yeah how we uh, deal with the government law um, we as Freifunk Rheinland um, are an ISP and uh, providing the transit for the, for the uh, communities with our own IP addresses and so we could handle the abuse when there will be abuse uh, by ourselves. So not, we are not um, uh, in, in some uh, problems with, with uh, some uh, other providers. So, But uh, in Germany the uh, law was changes. Um, it is called uh, Störerhaftung um, in, in German and um, it is so that when you provide an open WLAN access point um, you get the provider privilege that um, it is like an, an open access um, uh, node. It is not the same when it is your private Wi-Fi at home. So the, the, the problem with the law is is uh, not not so big anymore because we could really good fix this with our own um, ISP and, and some other uh, situations. Uh, before this, uh, we had some tunnel, uh, VPN connections to Sweden or other countries where there we have not so these uh, problems, but it's changed today. Yeah, some other questions. No. Ah, there. So, um, how do we now approach to establish the uh, right to access the internet as a human right on a political level? <laughs> how, how we how we do to to to, to get to um, to to bring our perspective from the uh, right of access um, to the politicians and what what. Uh, what we, we which point we reached uh, was the question at the moment. Um, I think that it is so um, that in a lot of cities in Germany there are quite good corporations with the local help organizations or other other organizations they are, are dealing with. Um, these uh, with these uh, refugees camps or some other um, social social um, rooms or social uh, clubs for for people that could have internet access there, but we didn't have uh, a huge accepted um, accepted decision that the politicians said. We have to build as standard an internet connection in such a location as such we build a um, shower or toilet. So we are not at this point. I think it is the goal to come to this point, but it's not the situation we have reached yet. It is a very long way to to uh, to be there. Um, I think. It is on a good way, but it takes much more time, yeah. 
there are some questions. Quick, quickly, because we have uh, like one minute and 30 seconds left. Last question. How do you judge the bandwidth? Like, is it for like access to anybody without any... Bandwidth. How... Yeah, what about the bandwidth uh, in our networks? So, I could only give you the information about the um, Five and Rheinland backbone that we provide, and there are a lot of these uh, 40,000, approximately 40,000 nodes connected to this. There we have an average uh, in traffic about 5 gigabits per second and um, a lot of this traffic we are, can um, bring out by peerings and internet exchanges. We have three different sites in Berlin, uh, Frankfurt and Düsseldorf where we connect it to some other carriers and providers and get some sponsoring with IP Transit so this is no problem, no problem and we didn't have to pay for, for traffic in the backbone because it's so that we have eyeball traffic, the access traffic and you can get a free settlement peering with the content providers and not with the, um, ex the problem with the access providers we have so that is no problem for us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>